we start by importing the GTT Hello Impact folder into our project. You can get it from the website, there's a link in the description. We're going to extract the materials from the model, so select the mod, right click, extract from prefab, and then create a folder for them. Let's drag the three new models and the best start with the sword into the 3D space. I'm going to rename Lucy Normal Lucy. Duplicate it and call the new object Evil Lucy. I make an empty object that I call Halloween and drag everything inside that object to keep order. Let's begin with Normal Lucy. For her dress I'm going to choose a black color. I set the colors for the black and white materials. Then I add the textures. The fifth material's name is Grong. This material corresponds to the hair. I continue to configure the materials of the photo and the urn. I remove the sword and collider from the pedestal and then place the tuning models on it. I'm having troubles with the rotation because I was using local coordinates instead of global. When the objects are placed, I drag the objects from the urn and photo to the object pedestal Halloween. For Evil Lucy, I'm going to create a new material for her skin and drag the corresponding textures. I'm gonna create two animator controllers, one for normal Lucy and one for evil Lucy. Next, I'm gonna see the animation that the model has. We have a jump scare and an animation for the levitation. For the last one, I check the box loop time and apply the changes. Double click on the normal Lucy animation controller and drag the levitation animation to the animator. Now open the Evil Lucy animation controller and drag the jump scare animation. When testing the scene, nothing happens because we haven't assigned the controllers to the space in the animator component of each object. I'm gonna create an empty object called Lucy's Spawn Point that will indicate the point where Lucy will appear. In my case, I'm gonna make it appear from one of the mountain peaks. We make another animation controller for the urn. In this case, we are gonna use the idle state and make a transition to the fall animation, which will be activated with a boot variable called fall. In the transition, we add the fall condition and uncheck the has exit time box. Then assign the controller to the animator of the urn. 
when simulating and checking the full box, I see that I confuse the state. I put the full animation not a lead. So I delete that state, so I delete the state, place the fold of the urn instead, and make the transition again. For the lead, we are gonna use physics instead of animation. Let's create the four necessary tags, Halloween, Evil Lucy, Light, and Lucy Origin. The Halloween tag is for the pedestal, I'll fix that later. The Evil Lucy tag for the Evil Lucy model, I assign the Lucy Origin tag to the Lucy Spawn Point object, and the Light tag to the two scene lights. I'm gonna rename these lights as Main Light to the one with the highest intensity, and Secondary Light to the other. To the pedestal and to all the objects that are on it, I'm gonna add a mesh collider in convex mode. If the collider doesn't appear, click on cooking options and then inflate convex mesh. Let's add the rigid body component to the urn and lead. By simulating the scene, we see that the lead slides and falls. Here I start trying to change a lot of parameters and test materials with different frictions, but the solution to this problem is to mark the rigid body of the urn as kinematic, and I also freeze all the transformation components. With this, I achieve that the lead is a rigid body that is affected by the animation of the urn. I drag the objects to the project folder to create prefabs and then I'm gonna create two scripts. One will be called Halloween Controller and the other Lucy. Let's define the attributes of the class Halloween Controller. We need the following. With Serialize field, a game object for normal Lucy prefab. A game object for the urn. A game object for Lucy's spawn point. A game object for the lead of the urn. A game object for the smoke prefab, which we'll make later. A game object for the origin of the smoke. A game object for the fog that we'll make later. A material to modify Lucy's photo. A color for the final state of Lucy's photo. A float for the change speed of the photo material. Without using serialized field, a game object for Lucy instance, a game object for the smoke instance. I'm gonna add a color for the initial state of Lucy's photo, just below the final color. Continuing with the private attributes, a float for the value of the interpolation parameter, a bool to indicate that the photo should be exposed a bool to indicate that Halloween has started. Finally, with Serialize Field, I add an animator for the Earn animator. Now let's define all the methods. We are gonna need the fixed update method, a public method to prepare Halloween, a private method to start Halloween, a public method to indicate that the Earn has fallen, a private method to fade Lucy from the photo, a public method to end Halloween, a private method to summon Lucy, and we are gonna need the onTrigger enter method for the interaction with the player. Let's move on to the game control script. In the attributes, we're gonna need the following. Using serialize field, a texture to turn the screen black. A texture for the final screen. A game object for the Halloween pedestal. A game object for the main light. A game object for the secondary light. 
a float for the intensity of the main light and another for the secondary light. Without using serialized field, a game object for the Halloween pedestal instance, a game object for the Labyrinth Piece instance containing the pedestal with sword, a Halloween controller for the Halloween controller instance of the control object, a bull to activate the black screen, and a bull to show the final screen. The first thing I'm gonna do is to save the reference of the piece containing the pedestal with the sword. This is done in the place object to find method. Now I'm gonna define the necessary methods. A private method to place the Halloween pedestal. A public method to dim the lights. A public method to indicate that the jumpscare is finished. A private method to show the final screen. And we will need the on GUI method to draw the black screen. Now let's work on Lucy script. We define the following attributes. Using serialized field, a float for the minimum flying height, a float for the velocity, a game object for the evil Lucy's prefab, a game object for the origin point. Without using serialized field, we define a game object for the instance of the player and a game object to save the target Lucy is gonna follow. Now the methods. Fix update method for Lucy's movement, the on trigger enter method for the interaction with the player, and a private method to indicate that Lucy has returned. Next we create the fog. For it we drag the prefab das storm mobile that is in the particle systems inside standard assets. Define the colors and parameters as you like. Now for the smoke, we make an empty object that'll be the origin and then we drag the prefab smoke that is in the same folder as the dust room in standard assets. Configure the smoke as you like. We must make sure that the prefab smoke has the same position as the origin. For that, we make zero all the components of its position. It's important that the smoke is a child of the game object origin, otherwise the smoke could be placed in the origin of the scene or the origin of some other game object. We place the smoke so that it looks like it's coming out of the urn and then make a prefab. Now let's add the Halloween controller script to the new pedestal and start filling in the fields. To vanish the photo, we're gonna use a black and white color to modify the emission channel. It's not necessary for the young animator to appear in this vector, so I remove the serialized field. The material change speed is set to 0.1. I'm gonna add to the pedestal a cube collider in trigger mode to detect if the player approaches. I make the collider as big as a labyrinth corridor.
Now let's fill in the fields of the game control object. The intensity of the light is set to taste. I'll use the ones that I already configured. I'm gonna add to normal Lucy a sphere collider in trigger mode to detect the player. Then I add the loose script and fill in the fields. I don't need the urging in the inspector since I'm gonna find it through the tag, so I take out the serialized field. Next, I'm gonna add an audio source, which will have the apocalypse clip found in the YouTube music library. I check the loop box and put the slider from 2D to 3D, so that the sound intensifies when Lucy approaches. I will define a maximum distance of 30 and a custom curve for the volume of the sound versus distance. Finally, apply the changes. I'm gonna place the character's prefab and deactivate the camera to test the sound. It's necessary to deactivate the audio listener of the camera from the main menu. Now we are going to work on the jump scare. We need the prefab of the character. I start by placing the evil Lucy as a child of the camera. Then I make her position component zero and I move her so that at the end of the animation she is placed very close to the camera. We are going to need the character's camera to be able to see closer objects so we modify the cutting planes. There's a problem with the occlusion cooling of the camera. Depending on the angle, certain objects disappear. To solve it, I select all the objects with mesh renderer and eliminate the root bone. Then I scale each object until the white region is big enough to cover the character. This way, the camera doesn't hide them. I decided not to stop to analyze the problem and move forward. I add light emission to the eyes and skin using the same textures and modifying the color to obtain the desired result. At the end, I apply the changes. Let's remove the character's prefab and activate the camera from the main menu. I forgot to add the audio of the screen so I put back the character's prefab and the evil Lucy as the son of the camera. I add the audio source to Lucy, lower the volume in half and apply the changes. When testing, I realized that I didn't apply the changes in the character's prefab and the cutting planes continue as before. I eliminate Lucy's prefab, modify the cutting planes and apply the changes. Then I'm gonna place the prefab of the Halloween pedestal near one of the gates and I'm gonna lower the volume of the character's footsteps. I have to get a more appropriate sound for that. I 
I assigned the Halloween tag to the pedestal and I'm gonna work on the game control script. In the start game method, I will place the Halloween pedestal with the method I defined for that, but I will leave that line as a comment. Then I assign the Halloween controller reference by getting it from the pedestal. And then I run the method to prepare Halloween, but I leave it also as a comment. In the Halloween controller update method, I will read the H key and run the Halloween start method if it's pressed. In the start Halloween method, I will make fold the urn by setting the bull fold in its animator. When testing, I find an error because the animator of the urn was unassigned. I will assign it in the prepare Halloween method and I will remove the comment bars in game control. Now pressing H, it works. Let's move forward with the animator controller of the urn. To the urn fold animation, I'll assign a behavior called urn animation action. I open it in mono develop and I'm gonna use the on state exit method. For that, I need that the animation can leave that state, so I'm gonna duplicate the state, make a transition to the new state, and for that, another transition to the default state. This transition will have the fold condition equals to false. The transition from the middle must have the exit time box assigned, since there is no condition. In the onStateExit method, we're gonna find the Halloween controller instance, which is assigned to the pedestal, and we're gonna execute from it the onHasFallen method. In Halloween controller's onHasFallen method, we instantiate the smoke in the origin. Then we invoke the method to vanish the image and activate the fold. In the vanish picture method, we simply make the exposed picture variable true. Let's go to the fixed update method and if exposed picture is true, we will do the following. If the interpolation value exceeds 1, we stop the vanishing. Then set the color of the emission of the material. For that, we make a color interpolation between the initial and final color using the interpolation value. Finally, we increase the interpolation value. It doesn't work because the photo material doesn't have the emission activated and also the change speed is zero. So I put 1 in the change speed and then I activate the emission of the material. Now 
Now it works. I define the initial color, copy the hexadecimal value and paste it into its place in the Halloween controller. In the Lucy method of Halloween controller, I'm gonna instantiate Lucy using the position of her origin. I'm gonna call the Lucy method in star Halloween. In the prepare Halloween method, I'm gonna find Lucy's origin using the tag. It works, only that I will choose to invoke Lucy after a certain amount of time, so it doesn't appear before the end of the urn animation. In the end Halloween method, I will destroy the smoke, make false the condition of the fall of the urn, deactivate the fog, destroy Lucy's instance, make false the variable Halloween has started, and cancel the invocations. In the method to prepare Halloween, I make false the variable Halloween has started, I cancel the invocations, I make zero the interpolation value, I make false the fault condition of the urn, I will return the urn lead to its initial position and rotation, and then deactivate the fog. I create an instance of the smoke object. I create a new color using the RGB components of the initial color. Then, I assign it to the picture material. Finally, I deactivate the smoke. In the edition of the video, I realized that the two smoke instructions are not necessary. In the onTriggerEnter method, I'm gonna check if the tag matches the players. If this is true, and Halloween hasn't started yet, I'm gonna invoke the start Halloween method and make true the Halloween has started variable. Returning to the prepare Halloween method, for the lead, I'm gonna modify the local position and rotation instead of global. I modify the photo material. The material can be modified during the game and doesn't return to the previous state. Now let's work on the Lucy script. In the start method, we're gonna find the origin, the character, and we're gonna set the character as a target. In the fixed update method, we're gonna create a vector3 interpolating Lucy's position with the characters, 
and using time.delta time as the interpolation value, multiplied by Lucy's speed. That way, in each step of fixed update, Lucy will be a little bit closer. If the y component of that vector is lower than the minimum, I make it equal to the minimum. Then, I assign that position to Lucy and make her look at the target. With this, Lucy is ready to chase us. Now let's go to the onTrigger enter method and check if the tag is the same as the characters. If this is true, Lucy's new target will be her origin. She will move with double speed. And invoke the Lucy has returned method after 2 seconds. In the method Lucy has returned, I find the character's camera and the game control component. I call the dim lights method inside game control, create an instance of the evil Lucy, make her a child of the camera, and finally destroy the normal Lucy. In the method to dim the lights, I'm gonna find the light components of the main and secondary lights and make zero the intensities. Now let's go to the animation of the evil Lucy. Duplicate the jump scare state, make a transition and give a very high value to the speed of the new state. The transition must have exit time. Then we create a behavior for the jump scare state. I call it jump scare action. We open it in monodevelop and in the onStateExit method, I find the game control component and execute the jumpscare ends method. In game control's jumpscare ends method, I make the variable to fade out the screen true and invoke the method to show the final screen after 3 seconds. In the method to show the final screen, I make false the variable to fade out the screen and true the end screen variable. In the onGUI method, if fade camera is true, I will execute this true instruction that will draw a black texture on the screen. If end screen is true, I will draw the final screen. In the update method, if the end screen variable is true, I will read any key and when pressed, the end game method is executed. I remove the comment bars from the code of place Halloween object method in start game. In the end game method, I run the end Halloween method of Halloween controller and return the lights to their initial state. To place the Halloween object, I'm gonna copy the contents of the place object to find method and modify it. I need to add the condition that the chosen piece must not contain the other pedestal. Then I remove the labyrinth piece assignment.
Then, outside the if statement, I get the random position from the piece and instantiate the Halloween object by saving the reference in the game object defined. I left that comment in the middle in case I needed to modify the height of the Halloween object, but it wasn't necessary. In the destroy all method, I destroy the instance of the Halloween object. When simulating, I find an error that is due to the fact that the prefab of the new pedestal wasn't assigned to it. In the endgame method, I have to make false the variables fade camera and end screen. The last thing I'm gonna do is freeze the character, disabling its character controller component in the method in which the lights are dimmed. There is a small bug in the method Lucy of Halloween controller. The problem is that I make the instance without saving the reference. When I execute the instruction to remove it, Lucy stays. That's it for today. This video totally escapes the original goals of the project and it's optional. What we did today will still be in the project but won't be necessary to move forward. I really enjoyed making this video. The idea came about in the middle of October, solving the challenge took about 5 days, two days to make the models and animations, and three to solve the programming. All this while working on the videos 9 and 10 and working also on the website. If someone comes to the end of this video and listen to this audio, I would like to thank for the patience and say that I hope to have been able to inspire ideas and decide to create. I see this video as a proof that with a few resources, it's possible to shape an idea which can then be improved. If you are interested in seeing this sort of content, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and share it with people who might be interested. Until the next video.